Hey guys, welcome to the channel, Starseed Alchemy. I'm DM, and in a previous video, I told you guys that there was a there was a guy who wrote um, a trilogy of books, uh, Dr. Claude Swanson. He's a doctor because he has a PhD, which means that he knows more than anybody else in a very specific area within physics. That's what a PhD means. Um, it requires a ton of research, and it requires you to ask a question and then research that, that question. So, this guy, when I talk about telekinesis, psychokinesis, there's a lot of videos on YouTube. You can just type it in, telekinesis, and you'll see a lot of stuff talking about how it's pseudoscience. Pseudo meaning fake science. Just telling you that it's real is not enough, right? And just showing you video, though it may pique your curiosity and get you to actually practice it yourself, that's not enough either. Um, I have mixed feelings about experts but some experts I respect far more than others. Somebody who has a PhD in something, I definitely respect a lot more than somebody who has an MD in something um, or you know, doesn't have any college degree whatsoever. Now, I don't have a college degree, so you know, my research has to do with reading books and my own experience but I haven't had very rigorous laboratory type experiments to point to. But my guess is that this guy, whether he did it himself or he met up with other people, other scientists who did these types of rigorous experiments, if you look at his bio, and I'm about to show you that now, it'll give you a sense of who this guy really was. So when I share things with you, realize that I'm not just sharing some off the cuff idea. I've either thought about it for years, um, or I've researched it, and I've found numerous sources that would lead me to believe in the idea that I'm coming up with. Besides that, I have a very strong connection to what you might call source, divinity, whatever. Um, and that's not to make me out to be some kind of priest or something. It's just to say that I've developed a higher functionality than a lot of people um, in this regard. So a lot of people, they've kind of put their connection to sleep and so they go through the Bible or they go through a pastor or a priest in order to have that connection established and to me those are ways to connect with what I call deity what some call source some call God, right? Um, but I don't believe it's the only way. And I believe if you rely on too much external validation, um, then, you, then you can't build your own internal validation. you get in the habit of trusting other people over your own experience. And there are times to do that. But in time, what you want to do is you want to develop your capacity to reason and your capacity to trust your intuition. And you hone your intuition by using it, by paying attention going into meditative states, prayer, stuff like that, 
reading sacred texts. You check it with external, with the external world. And so you're constantly getting feedback, both external and internal. And over time, you develop a very strong intuition, which can guide you. And that coupled with your own reasoning, your imagination and your memory, and your senses all come together to help you make sense of the world around you. So here he is, Dr. Claude Swanson. Dr. Claude Vince Swanson passed away peacefully in his sleep in June of 2022 in Tuscan, Arizona, at the age of 75. But that was only a year ago. I would have loved to meet this guy. I didn't know he had passed away. As a young man, Claude was driven by an intense curiosity about the world around him. He pursued a career in applied physics, earning his undergraduate degree at MIT and winning the Borden Prize for the highest freshman GPA. Okay, so he not only had a PhD, but he was like top, you know, top intelligent guy. And the fact that he went to MIT. He earned a PhD in physics at Princeton while receiving both the National Science Foundation and Putnam Fellowships and continued his research as a postdoctoral fellow at Cornell University. Okay, so he's gone to multiple schools and a lot of them, you know, highbrow. Following a leadership position at the Aeronautical Research Associates of Princeton, he founded his own consulting company, Applied Physics Technology, Inc., and carried out studies in applied physics for commercial and government agencies. Okay, so not only did he go to school, to these prestigious schools, not only did he graduate, like, top of the class, um, not only did he get a PhD, but he built his own business and his business was good enough to attract the attention of the government and other, you know, private or public businesses he did business with. But Claude was most passionate about understanding the phenomena that science could not explain. His first pursuit as a graduate student was unified field theory, an ambitious field of physics research that seeks to unite all the governing theories of force and matter in the universe into a single framework. By his accounting, the science of the paranormal was an essential missing piece of that framework. And that's what I keep saying. By the way, unified field theory, um, so far there, there is a greed that there are four main forces. So those forces are electromagnetic, gravity, the strong and the weak nuclear forces. So the forces that cause fission and then the other one causes fusion. There is a fifth, supposedly a fifth force that has to do with, I believe, photons. But that hasn't been tested nearly as much as these other four forces. But in unified field theory, these four, they're trying to figure out, like, how is it that gravity is connected to electromagnetism and how are those two connected to the nuclear forces right what is it that holds everything together is there a common denominator all right so this led him <clears throat> this led him to investigate many aspects of the paranormal which appear to be completely real and violate our present scientific theory. These phenomena have been proven in duplicatable experiments. 
and offer a window into the deeper universe, the mysteries of consciousness, and uh, unlock new forces that conventional science has only begun to glimpse. Thousands of out-of-body and near-death experiences show that other dimensions and parallel realities do exist. Not only that, math verifies this. Higher math, mathematics. Although this has been the domain of speculation by theoretical physics, these cases indicate that these dimensions are in some sense real. And research suggests that the human soul, the center of human consciousness, can survive death and is apparently an energy form which can move and exist independently of the body. Hold on a sec here. Let's see if we can use these down arrows. Yeah, cool. Evidence of PK or psychokinesis, remote healing and remote viewing, which is allowing you to see great distances allow you to see into things that are that are like locked up um, so that you shouldn't be able to physically see with your eyes you can see psychically that's what remote view viewing is in fact um, the military has been heavy into remote viewing so evidence of PK remote healing and remote viewing produce signals that travel much faster than light So, you know, on one hand, Einstein said nothing or, or his findings led people to believe that nothing can travel faster than the speed of light. And the video, the previous video that this video is about, not only talked about Dr. Claude Swanson, but it talked about the Y channel. And this guy who was proposing who had researched to find that there's an alternative explanation for gravity, and that is the idea of the electric universe. So in the model of the electric universe, this electricity, which is free-flowing ionized, I guess, atoms or whatever, within the universe creates a plasma, and that plasma is able to travel much faster. Um, the electricity that goes through that plasma is able to travel much faster than the speed of light. So much faster than the speed of light. These signals move backward and forward in time. Events, <laughs> events such as teleportation and levitation heretofore thought to be matters of science fiction might now be explained. Claude's deep curiosity and this conviction drove his investigations into the paranormal that he documented and shared with the world through his published volumes, The Synchronized Universe, Life Force, and Science of the Soul. A gifted teacher, Claude was able to explain, in layman's terms, concepts of torsion energy and his theory of new physics as an expert on the science of the paranormal, he was an influential author and speaker in the community and was professionally affiliated with the Monroe Institute, Forever Family Foundation, MUFON, Caritas, and many others. Okay, so not only did he have his own business, but he was rubbing shoulders with all those people who were doing cutting edge research. Um, and professionally affiliated with them. He was grateful, he was deeply grateful for the close friendship and intellectual openness that he found in these communities. His appearances in numerous documentaries and videos can be found on Gaia, YouTube, Vimeo, and other locations. All right, so here's another level of why you might want to trust this guy is the fact that other people came to him and made documentaries about him and his research. You know, that doesn't just happen by accident. 
I've had my YouTube channel for like freaking five, five years, much longer than that. But talking about telekinesis, I put over 800 videos on it. And for whatever reason, my marketing or whatever, there's hardly a peep about it, it seems, right? So this guy was making waves in really big ways because of his discoveries. So, all right, his epic written works were created after many years of studying and compiling evidence from scientists and advanced laboratory research throughout the world. He compiled information from yogis, adepts, psychics, and physicists alike. All right, there's another level. So this guy went to like masters of these abilities and he interviewed them and he coupled that with scientific like rigorous experimentation of other scientists on this. Okay, and advanced laboratory research throughout the world. He compiled information from yogis, adepts, psychics, and physicists alike. In, the, in this pursuit, he studied remote viewing, orbs, ancient writings, underwater research in Bimini, measured magnetic waves in crop circles and haunted houses, and spent nights in the Great Pyramid of Giza all the while conducting his own experiments, tested new devices which measure these forces and documenting the work of others. He left no stone unturned and he is greatly missed. Claude's sister Patricia is keeping his legacy alive by keeping his books in print and available. Please visit synchronizeduniverse.com for more information. Okay, so. What we can do is a new tab, type in synchronized universe. Key component is the Russian science of torsion, which has been proven in the laboratory and is central to many spiritual and consciousness phenomena. So those are his three books. Now he's even talking about the afterlife. Now this is really interesting to me and very close to my heart because I've had many people die. Uh, my father, my mother, my girlfriend while I lived on the street, and um, a martial arts mentor of mine who was in the special forces. Also a few other people in my life, but <clears throat> those are like the main four that were really, really close to me. And I got into telekinesis in large part because I wanted to prove the existence of something beyond just physics, beyond just the material world, you might say. And my first step into that would have to do with can energy leave the body, right? Can energy be produced in the brain, leave the body, and affect the environment? If that's possible, then maybe other things are possible, like we have a soul, right? Like we have a spirit. That our consciousness isn't just this neurochemical makeup, but that it can be separated from the electromagnetics 
of our body, the nerve impulses, right? That it's not just a cluster of information that came together to form our cells, that there's something more than that. And I didn't just want to read it in some sacred text, right? Some religious, I didn't want to deal with religious dogma. I wanted to experience for myself if this were true. And I've had experiences where I felt like I did leave my body. I did what's called astral traveling. Um, on a few separate occasions. I've also had meditative experiences where I've suddenly blown out of my body and traveled what felt like trillions of miles away from this solar system into the black deepness and coldness of space where there's no light, no nothing around. I've also in my mind, I've had an experience called re re recapitulation, where I've traveled back in time, had the exact experience that I had as a kid, every single detail crystal clear, and then came back into my physical present now body and broke down in tears. Um, and that was part of the recapitulation process. Um, what shamans may call um, soul reunification or something where like bits and pieces of the soul have been spread over through trauma. And there's a process of regrouping all that together. I've experienced a lot of trauma in my life, maybe not as much as some, um, but definitely my fair share. And so these studies are very important to me personally. And if this stuff is true, right, if some of this stuff is true, it might help us not only live our lives in a more conscious way, but perhaps even, I don't know, meet up with our loved ones who've passed on, right? Communicate with them. Um, and it might give us hope that there's something beyond this life and that we might see those people again who are so near and dear to our hearts and maybe even our pets, you know? Anyways, I will talk to you guys later.